When I was around 15, I became a caddy in order to make some extra spending money. Now, at first, I had no particular interest in golf, but soon fell in love with the game. And as I do with everything that I'm passionate about, I did some research wanting to learn as many tips from the pros as possible. In my reading, I came across a book by Sam Snead which contained a story that I've never forgotten and which illustrates the beauty of what it means to be an instrument in the hands of our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Sam Snead's day, betting on a round of golf was a common practice, even among the pros. Once he had an ordinary golfer, a plump Cuban named Tamu, who came up to him wanting to bet. Of course, they both knew this man could never beat Snead in a straight match, so he asked Sam for strokes, which would be deducted from his total score at the end. Sam Snead obliged the man and gave him one stroke per hole, or 18 total strokes. By the end of the round, Snead had beaten him easily and pocketed a nice amount of cash for his trouble. But Tamu was determined to try again. Instead of accepting his loss, he told Snead, Hunting season on! I beat you yet! Snead gave him a few more strokes than before and still beat him. Snead felt bad about taking advantage of this man who was obviously a much better businessman than he was a golfer. He said, Come on, Tommy, let's quit. But this man was determined he was going to win a bet from Snead, and he declared to Sam, No, still hunting season. Snead then played him using only a three-wood, even for putting, no other golf clubs. By this point, he was starting to hope the man would beat him, as he didn't need the money and he felt bad for the desperate man. But using only that one club, he was still unbeatable and shot a 78 for 18 holes, far better than the Cuban. When Tamu refused to give up, Snead wanted to help the poor guy out, so he went into the woods and cut off a branch from a maple tree. Using a hatchet and pocket knife, he carved a crude club head at the fat part of the branch and offered to play Tamu using only the branch and a pitching wedge. He had used such a homemade golf club as a boy when he couldn't afford the real thing. And just to make sure the stick slash golf club was as pitiful as it looked, Tamu tried a few swings with it, and he couldn't even get the ball into the air at all. Now he was sure he would win. Game on, he shouted. Hunting season getting hot now. Sam Sneed wrote in his book, As much as I wanted to lose, that swamp maple worked as well for me as it had when I was a kid. Using it for tee and fairway shots, chipping and putting with the wedge, I came in with a 76, beating Tamu about as badly as ever. Finally, Tamu had enough and declared that the hunting season was closed for good and went back to Cuba. I wasn't a follower of Jesus Christ when I read that book, but once I gave my life to Jesus, I realized what a perfect illustration that story is. The tree branch that Sam Snead used was not the key to his low score. It had no magic in it. Snead did not afterwards take that branch to a golf club manufacturer and suggest that they duplicate it and start selling it to golfers everywhere. Until it had been cut off the tree, it was utterly unfit for service on the golf course. And even after being cut and carved, it was still crude and far from perfect as an instrument to propel a tiny golf ball from tee to green. But somehow, in Snead's hands, that stick worked exceedingly well. The key was the golfer, not the golf club. And so it is with all those who would do service for the master. Until Jesus pulls us from the world and saves us, we're totally unfit for any good thing. And even after we're saved and he starts his work in our lives, we're still pretty rough. We are far from ideal instruments in his hands. Yet somehow that does not seem to matter so much. Jesus is such an expert in making use of flawed instruments. He can use people like you and me. The Bible does not call us golf clubs in Jesus' hands, of course, but it does call us vessels. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor 
sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Let us offer ourselves to Jesus as living sacrifices. He does not require perfection. He does not insist upon extreme talent. He's always made pretty good use of imperfect instruments. If you enjoy these video devos, you need to check out our Devo Uploads page. This page contains links to all the video devos we have available on this channel. Click on the Uploads link in the description below and check out our many video devos.